All right, so here we go. It is officially Tuesday, October 19th, 2021. And we're gonna have some monotony today talking about keyboard shortcuts. Um, but before we talk about keyboard shortcuts, let's go ahead and open that bad boy up. And I'm gonna do a keyboard shortcut to start with. You can see my screen right now. Yep. Shows Photoshop zero to 60 in a week. Well, if I hit the F button, I'm gonna take it to full screen. And you notice that I still have my rulers up there on the sides and on the top. If I hit Command or Control R, that gets rid of the rulers. And if I hit Command or Control zero, it brings up full screen. Command or Control one is actual pixels. Boy, am I skipping through that really fast. <laughs> okay, Command zero is the most important one. That brings it up full screen. Um, you can make it bigger or smaller by hitting either the Command plus or the Command minus. And that brings it up bigger and smaller. So those work really well um, for saving a lot of time. You don't have to zoom in and out and play around with it. But the reason we have this brought up is West Coast School is June 15th. I'm sorry, June 5th through the 12th, 2022. And you guys have all heard my spiel before, so I won't go through it again. But just to let you know, we will have fun in our class. Right, Anthony? Yes, sir. Always do. And for, me, and for me to close this, I'm going to hit Command or Control W. Command W, click, and it closes it. That's the magic for that one. Okay, I'm going to open up an image just for fun. And let's see. Let's open up this one just to have something open while we're playing. Now, what was the keyboard shortcut for making it full screen? Control zero. Control zero or command zero. If you're on a PC, it's control. If you're on a Mac, it's command. I happen to be on a Mac. So if I forget to mention it, then you guys know um, the translator is command and control and option or alt. And the in Mac it's shift and on a PC it's shift. <laughs> I don't want to confuse you, Michael. It's nope, nope, shift nope. to shift, okay? Um, some of the quicker shortcuts, um, there's so many it's it's unbelievable, but we'll just do the first one, command A. Command or control A is select all. So you don't have to go to your marquee tool and select everything by dragging it around. Just hit command A and it selects the whole image. If you want to copy it, you can go up to file, copy, and I'm sorry, edit, copy, and you have to go find it, okay? All the Basically, most every computer program, if you want to copy, it's Command or Control C. So if hit Command C, it copies it to the clipboard. And if I want to paste it, it's Command or Control V, like in Victor, and that's paste. And you'll notice that on my layer panel over here, I now have layer one, which is a copy. Because I did Command A to select all. Command C to copy, Command V to paste. Um, if I wanted to do just the moon, what I do is hit the M for marquee, Command C, Command V, or a shortcut is Command J, and that puts it up on a new layer. 
Um, Michael, uh, this might be a silly question. Every once in a blue moon, I'll do uh, Command uh, C to copy something, and it'll say that the image is too large for the clipboard. Is there a way of expanding acceptance into the clipboard of a larger file, or is there a limit? I didn't know there was a limit for the clipboard. Yeah, I've got. I that know that when you. When you close the program out, it'll say uh, too much information in the clipboard, can't save it, so it's going to delete it. Mm -hmm. But it should be able to select, I mean, I could dig out a huge file and make it a whole lot bigger. I don't want, I don't want to interrupt your workflow. I was no, just, that's fine. just that's wondering, because I've run across it once or twice, and that was very frustrating. Let's go ahead and go to image image size and let's add a couple of zeros on there there you go <laughs> holy cow <laughs> okay let's see what happens if your machine crashes it's not my fault <laughs> <laughs> we may have to start this program all over again we'll see what happens um it looks like i'm getting this spinning wheel of death there it's 50 gigs it's 50 gigabytes, yeah, 50 I saw gigs. that. <laughs> okay, here it goes. And going, it may take a little while. I don't know if there is a limit out there. Um, I'm going to cancel because I don't want to waste the whole thing on that. Sure, I will, sure. I'll look into that, John, see what I can come sure. up with. Okay, thanks. Okay, wow. You spun my computer. <laughs> <laughs> i'll keep my mouth shut i'm just not no 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 it's, it's something i need to to figure it out i did i i know i couldn't save to clipboard when i closed the file because the clipboard was so huge but i didn't know you couldn't save to the clipboard yeah and maybe I'll look up my computer okay clipboard size yeah. i'm writing myself a note right now to look that up for next week all right, thanks. And next week, we're going to do actions per request of Roger. So we're going to walk through actions again. And uh oh, <laughs> I don't remember who it was, but last week somebody was asking about the banana. I know you'll get into it. Ah, uh, yes, know. the banana. I don't know if somebody is that person is here this week. I don't think she's here this week, but we'll do it anyway. And then she can watch it on the the reruns let me reopen photoshop because i had to shut it down manually this is a test had this been an actual emergency there we go and you can see my screen again i hope yes okay um if i wanted to open up a document from Photoshop, Command O is the fastest way to do that. So if I hit Command O, it brings up the folder that I was working in. And I just double click on one of those, or I can mm -hmm. um, click on it and then click Open. So we'll cancel that. Um, and the shortcut to print, everybody knows Command P or Control P. Mm -hmm. That is probably the fastest one. If you're going to print something, Command or Control P, boom, and you're going. So Command P and have print. Cancel. And then I already discussed it, but we'll do it again. Command J is copy layer. Command or Control J. It brings up a new layer for me. So I have two different layers going on. Command I. Not shift command I, but command I. Command I will inverse your colors. So it inverses the images, their image. And command I will redo it or command Z. But if I have a selection, such as selecting the moon, and if I hit shift command or shift control I, it inverses my selection. So now the moon is not selected, but everything around the moon is. And you can see the marching ants go on the outside 
and then also where I had selected before. That's the fastest way to invert your selection. And to deselect, you can go up to select, deselect, or you can see the letters right there, Command D or Control D deselects. So while you're searching around for, uh, see it's under select and down to deselect, all I have to do is hit Command D and it deselects. It's just that fast. Can I ask a question, Michael? No. Okay, next time. Okay. <laughs> and moving on. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I think it has to do with the control. Sometimes my image, um, if I'm working in color, all of a sudden is in black and white. How do you revert that back to the way it was before? I don't know what I pressed to make it go into black and white, but it shows up as black and white. If it just changes all of a sudden on you? Yes. A um, couple of different things you can do. You can go to history and figure out where it happened. Doesn't Maybe work. Didn't work? No. And did you try control Z or command Z, which is undo? I uh, call, it the, call it the oops key. Yeah, no, I know which one you're talking about. I don't remember, in all honesty. You might try that. Um, right. Okay, thank you. Yep, I'm looking to see. There we go. Um, if you hit shift option or shift alt command or control, all three of the modifiers and B, it'll take you into black and white. Um, that's a shortcut too. Um, I think control or command U will go to hue and saturation and you can take out the saturation, which maybe you hit command U by accident. I don't know. Um, it doesn't show anything in your history as to what caused it? No, not what I recall. And I went all the way back step by step to see if I could get back to the color image and it, it didn't work, even to the open image. Hmm. Wow. Um, in that case, just go up one above open, just click on the, like mine says Africa 2021, um, and that'll take you back to the start equivalent to open, but I don't know the answer to that one. Uh, you know, it's, it's happened to me also. And well, good, uh, it's not it, me. <laughs> no, no, yeah, it's, it's happened because I, I hit something wrong of fat fingers. So I'm trying to repeat it. And um, I, I know what you're talking about, because it is, it has happened to me because I have fat fingers. So I'm just trying to duplicate that problem. So in, anyway, you yeah, can continue on. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you find out what we did, let, let us know, because I've probably done it too, or I've done keystrokes where I go, what did I just do? <laughs> um, if you want to save this image over the top of itself, just Command S is save. If you want to save as, Command Shift S or Control Shift S will save as Control Shift S. However, one of the things with the new version of Photoshop it won't allow you to save as a JPEG straight out of the box. So what you have to do is go to preferences and I think it's file handling, enable legacy save as. So this is one thing, if you're having trouble saving as a JPEG, go to enable legacy save as, and then click on that, click okay, and you're good to go. And if you want the keyboard shortcut to preferences, either on a Mac or a PC, Commander Control K. Commander Control K will get you into preferences. Hmm. And on a Mac, preferences are under Photoshop preferences. And I believe on a PC, I haven't done it for a while, edit down to preferences on a PC. Well, that makes me, makes me crazy they don't put it in the same spot. To quit Photoshop, this is an easy one to remember, Command Q, Q for quit, Command Q. The oops key or back up one level is Command Z or Control Z. That's my oops key. Um, 
I use it on a regular basis. That's my favorite key. In fact, my keyboard, the Z is just about um, super shiny because I use it so often. Um, we made a whole bunch of layers on here. Let's do a couple more. If I want to just merge layer one, copy two, and layer one, copy, I hit command E. That will merge the two layers together. Basically, what that does is merge down. So if I am at layer one, the one in the middle, and I hit command E, that gets rid of layer one. Let's add, just for fun, B for brush. Add that puppy all over the place. I want to combine all these images down into one layer. So I'm going to do what's called the claw. Thank you, Jimmy DiVitale. Yeah. You hit shift alt or shift option control or command. So all three of the modifiers shift alt control E. And that makes its own layer on top. So it takes everything that's underneath makes it into one layer. So for a Mac, it's shift option command E like an Edward or E like an everything shift option E like an everything shift option command E. So, so to create a layer, it's command J that just creates the layer, uh, the layer that's below it. It will copy whatever layer you're on. Let's say I'm on uh, layer one and I hit command J that it makes layer one copy number two, because I already have copy number one. Okay. Um, but it just makes a copy of that layer. If you have a selection, let's select the sun there, and I hit command J, it makes a copy of that selection and puts it on a new layer. Okay. So you can build different parts of the image using command J, you figure out what you want to do and then command J to make it on the next layer. And then okay. I can move it over V for move tool. And I just move it over. Okay, let me go back to the start, clean that up a little bit. Uh, let's see what I've missed. Open preferences. Okay, I'm going to go through the ABCs of keyboard shortcuts. I use probably three quarters of them on a regular basis. Keyboard shortcut A is path select. That's the default for A. However, I have changed my A to use the mixer brush and the smudge tool are now A. You can go in and change these and we'll show you right after we go through all the letters, I'll show you how to change these into um, the way you wanna use it. I've never used the path select tool. I've got no idea what it does, but that's okay. Um, we also have B, A is path select, B is brush. The brush tool is really cool because you can go to it very quickly by hitting B. Or if you're like some people, you're on the bottom right corner of your image working on it, and you know, I need to go to the brush. So you go over here, you go down, 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 down. There's the brush. Click on brush. But if I'm over here and I want to go to brush, I just hit B for brush. I don't have to go all the way across. That saves me two, two and a half seconds. And all those seconds add up in a heartbeat. So B for brush, you will use all the time if you use your brush, which most people do. C is this crop tool. C for crop. That's fairly easy to remember. There's your uh, crop. M Michael, back on yes. that brush, one question on that brush. There was a command that you can, you're on that, you're uh, on the brush there, but you're on your uh, signature. There's a command that you shared one time in which you can go back to the top one, the soft brush. Uh, 
there's not a keyboard shortcut for that. However, uh, I have shortcuts built in. Um, I, I could have thought there was one, a command something. Not that I know of. Try <laughs> command comma. Command comma? I could be wrong. If you do command comma. Won't uh, nope. Nope. You okay. to take you back to your brush selector? I just, I have my brushes, the ones I use on a regular basis, I have them set up in my presets. Mm -hmm. So I hit B for brush. And if it's not the brush I want, I'll go up here. Here's my soft round brush. Yeah. All I have to do is double click on it. Okay. Boy, I thought there was. Okay. Thanks, Michael. You betcha. Why is he bringing up your logo, Mike? Um, when I'm doing image, I have my logo brush. So what I do is make it smaller with the left bracket key, which is right next to the P. Mm -hmm. And when I put it on Facebook, it's got my logo on there. So when it gets stolen and added on, um, on somebody else's page, I know that it's mine. So you're just saving your logo in a brush? Right. Uh, okay. We made a brush. Uh, we can do this in a couple of weeks too. Making brushes is super easy and how to make a logo for your your brush. That's why it keeps coming up on my logo brush. Okay, crop tool. Here we go, C for crop. And again, I have presets of the crops that I use on a regular basis, anywhere from four by six, five by three, all the way up to yearbook crop for high school seniors. So everything I do, um, I was working for a website for Mosby Winery and they wanted a certain size 1600 by 578 at 300. Okay. So I made the, the crop tool, made a preset. So every time I used it, it was there for me. Oh, I like that crop. Command Shift S. And we're going to save this C for crop. I like that crop. Cool. By the way, Michael, I did find that. I just experimented around. If you're on some other brush, if you do shift comma. If shift hit, comma? Yeah, if you hit shift comma. Oh, cool. Thank you. I Thank you, John. I, yeah, I actually figured out one. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Taking the rest of the day off. <laughs> cool. I will let you know that I do not know everything about Photoshop. I know a lot more than I <laughs> I know about 50% maybe, so. Ah, okay. We went to the crop. Right now, you look at my brushes, my colors. The foreground is white. The background is white. Well, I want to go to my default colors. Default is D for default, black and white. D for default. And I'm going to skip ahead a couple of letters and go to X to exchange colors. So you go back and forth and hit X. So there you go with that one. And the one that I rarely ever use is E, E for eraser tool. And you see it comes in at the bottom down here. The reason for that, it's in the toolbar, the portion of the toolbar that I don't use. Um, all these are ones I've taken out. The triangle tool, the, all those, I don't use them. Okay, we talked about earlier the full preview or full screen preview, if F, F, and then I hit command zero to go full screen. And again, to take out the rulers is command R, to add the rulers is command R. And if you wanna change the rulers from inches to pixels, you just right click on the ruler and you can decide how you wanna have it done. I always work in inches. That's how my brain works. So uh, it's just the way I do it. And F to bring everything back again. So one F gets rid of some of the stuff. Two Fs gets rid of all the stuff except the rulers. Three Fs will bring it all back. You're just pressing F, you're not pressing control. Really nope, that. just F. F like in Frank. F, 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 F. Then we go to G. G is the gradient tool. 
and it's also the paint bucket tool or used to be paint bucket tool it's in there i took paint bucket out because i don't use the paint bucket because there's a keyboard shortcut for that so i took it out of there but g is for the gradient tool and we can talk about that in a future episode how to use the gradient tool because that one's confusing sometimes and then you have h for hand the hand tool is right above the zoom tool and if you click on the hand tool you can move your image around if it's bigger than full screen if you want to go make your image full screen all you have to do is double click on the hand and that brings up the image full screen or you can hit command zero which is just fast okay we're in the hand tool now so now i can move things around or if you're in any other tool like the brush tool if i hit the space bar you hold the space bar down and you can move your image around as well so i'll double click on the hand again bring it back to full screen i is for the eyedropper tool which i don't use so let's hit i for eyedropper there it is right there yeah the eyedropper tool and a whole bunch of other stuff in there um the fastest way to the eyedropper tool if you're using your brush and you want to pick a color you don't have to go to the eyedropper tool you hit the option or alt key and you can see it brings up the eyedropper tool so i can pick out the colors that i want just by holding the option key down and clicking so that's the eyedropper tool k is the frame tool which is right here i've never used the frame tool so I'm not going to even try and talk about it. I just know it's there. Um, if I click on it, do that. I don't know what it does. Hit Command Z to get rid of it. L, L is for lasso. That makes it easy to remember, L for lasso. So you just lasso whatever you want. Command Z to get rid of that. Also on the lasso tool, you have polygonal lasso and magnetic lasso, which I've taken the magnetic out because I pretty much don't use it anymore. And I pretty much don't use the polygonal or polygonal lasso tool either. I do use the lasso tool on a regular basis. M is for marquee. You can do a rectangular marquee or you can click a Oh, I'm sorry, click right here and do an elliptical marquee. So you can do round. If you hold nothing, you do an oval. If you hold the shift key, it does a perfect circle for you. Ooh. And once you get your marquee set, you can just drag it over where you want it. And that's your selection you can change to the rectangular you can do rectangular marquee or you can hold the shift key you hold the deselect hold the shift key and it makes a perfect square for you and you can have it do a fixed size fixed ratio um in the styles up here where it says normal you have a drop down there you can also whoops you can also do feather and you can have it intersect so let's do rectangular marquee i'll hold the shift key down we'll intersect it so now the whole area if you hold the option key it takes that part out mm -hmm. Okay, in. Does anybody know what the keyboard shortcut in does? No good. In is for nothing. There is no in in keyboard shortcut. If you do command or control in, you will do a new document. It brings up the new document dialog box. 
you can pick out what you want to do. O is the burn and dodge tool. Right now, mine's set to dodge, so I do shadows, just screw up the exposure 100%. And you can see what it does. It takes the color out when it dodges. I hate the dodge and burn tool. Or if you hit shift O, it'll take you to the burn tool. And all it does is make things black. So, <laughs> so let's go back up, deselect, take those out. And P is for the pen tool. How many people use the pen tool? Sometimes. Never. I'm glad, I'm glad <laughs> you do, Mike, because I uh, I don't like the pen tool. We don't get along. I'm going to tell you yeah. a keyboard shortcut is P. That's all I'm going to tell you. Yep. I'm not going to show you how to use it because I don't use it. I thought that was print. Control P is print or command yeah. P. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Q is for quick mask. For those who have never used a quick mask, let's go down to... There's my quick mask right down here under the colors. So you got foreground, background color, right below it is quick mask. If I double click on that, I can change the color of the quick mask from red. So if I'm working on red like that, change it into slime green. Um, color indicates what's masked or selected. I'm gonna have selected, take my B for brush make it a hard edge brush. So I'm going to take it up to 100% hard edge. Make it bigger using the bracket keys. That is now what's selected. So if I hit Q for quick mask again, there's my selection that I just did. Hit Q for quick mask, brings it up again. That's my selection. So deselect. Um, I use the quick mask a lot when I'm doing basically um, selections that need a very tight. Some people use the pen tool. I use the quick mask. And I paint with a very hard edge brush. Um, I will get into that later. Never mind. R is for rotate. If you're painting on something and you want to rotate it, hit R for rotate and you can rotate it around. And sometimes you do this by accident and go, uh-oh, what did I do? How do I get out of this? If you hit escape, it gets out of it. Or if you double click on the rotate tool, which is down highlighted just above the zoom tool, double click on it and it brings you back to where you started. So that's the rotate. So if you're painting and you don't wanna go up and down, you wanna go side to side, all you have to do is rotate your image, B for brush, side to side, instead of going up and down. That's also a quick way if you rotate and inverse your image when you're working on comp shots, so you're not looking at the image and looking at what your retouching is. It's a good way to check out what you're doing and how it's looking. Dwight, your voice changed. How did my voice change? Dwight's voice changed. He signed in as Dennis this morning. Well, I sent him the link so the little the little guy wouldn't get lost. <laughs> so what was the unrotate, Michael? Unrotate. Let's go ahead and rotate it. You can either hit escape or you can double click on the rotate tool icon and it will bring it back to normal. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. S is for the clone stamp. And I know everybody uses a clone stamp today. At least I do. So I'm in the clone stamp, hold the option or alt key, select where I want it. And put my second moon in over there. So could you do that again? Okay. I'm gonna select the, the sun. I'm going to hold the option or alt key and you see it brings up a target in the uh, middle of the icon there mm -hmm. and I click on it and then I just 
paint what I want to keep hmm. wherever I want to keep it at. There we go. Clone stamp is really cool. Um, the cool thing about the clone stamp is you can set it so it lines up with, let's say I want to do across that line right there. So I hit option alt on the line between the mountain and the sun. Come over here and lined up on top of the hill there. So we have a second sun right on the hill. So you can line it up, you can get it perfectly aligned. Questions on that? Why hitting escape? Does that get you out of everything and anything? Escape, what I'm hit, hitting to get out of what I just did, I've been hitting the command Z or control Z, the oops key, and it backs it up a couple of states. Well, okay. So I have my clone stamp, I hit commander, Control Z, get rid of one, uh, get rid of all three. So we'll bring them all back up. So I hit Command Z and it takes, gets rid of them all. Okay. T for type or T for text. Really easy. Just hit T and it goes into your text tool. I just drag out where I want my text to be and we'll pick the color of the sun and type in here. And you can see nothing typed because I looked at my top toolbar, Helvetica bold, 122 point. <laughs> 122 point ain't going to fit in there. So I hit command A to select all my text. And let's take it down to 12 point. There we go. Wait, I think your computer has been hacked. Yeah. I think it has. <laughs> okay, I got it back. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> um, one of the things about the text tool, if you're on your text layer, you don't have to select what you want to change anymore. So if I want to change that layer of text, I'm in the text layer, I'm in the text tool or type tool, and I want to change the color. So I go here, I want to change it to dark, we'll change it to chalkboard. I changed my mind. I want to go lime green. And there we go. You don't have to go over here, double click on everything to change it unless you just want to change, say one letter. So I want to change, come on, one letter. Change one letter. If you, you wanted, how'd you bring up the color picker that quick? Um, what I did was clicked on the color at the very top in the text bar, the oh, toolbar. bar. Okay. Okay. Click, okay. click on that, and the change <clears throat> change to white. I hit F F F. It's actually six Fs, but you can shortcut it with three Fs, and it'll get you there. If you want to do black, you hit zero. And it's a little shortcut there. Mike, show them real fast how they can uh, scroll through all the types of fonts without, you know, they can just use the roller squeal by clicking in, highlighting that. And then you can just go through. I have my scroll just going down with the scroll there. Yeah. You can, without going through and all, you can just scroll through and I'll show you what the type is if you scroll through like that. Yeah. Or if you're on there and you figure, okay, let's go ahead and go. Down, 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 down. Yep. Takes forever to do that. So I just, I have my type size big so I can see the samples. But also, instead of scrolling on a scroll wheel, I can drag my cursor over each one and see how it looks 
with the letters I'm using. Thank you, Dennis. Okay, let's get rid of that. If you're on your layers panel and you want to select two layers, I have first one selected, hold the shift key, select the second one. I'm gonna get rid of them. You can either drag them down to the trash can, command Z to undo that, or you can just hit uh, delete and they're gone. I like shortcuts, so I like saving time. Uh, U for custom shape. U is the custom shape. So if I wanted to put a Christmas tree in there, zoom got in the way. Let's go to legacy shapes, default shapes. We'll do two 2019 shapes, conifer trees. I have a tree up there. Change the color from ugly red to a nice Christmas green. And now we have a, a tree. You can add a stroke to it. You can do all kinds of other stuff, but that's, that's a thing for another day. The shape tool, you can also do uh, the rectangle tool. So if you wanted to add a layer and you wanted to put this box on there and then I wanted to put a picture inside the box, we got it. It adds it there. And what I'll do is right click on here, place in Photoshop. I'm going to hit my option or alt key between the layers, which creates a clipping mask. Command T to make it smaller. And there's my advertisement for West Coast School. Again. So I'll get rid of those two. Um, also in the uh, you, you have elliptic, polygonal, and line tool. And you can play with those and see what they do as well. The next one up is the move tool. V for move. V for move. If it's already full size like this, I can't move it. Let's say convert to normal layer, then you might be able to move it. Okay, we'll convert to normal layer and we can move it. I don't want to. What I can do is make it bigger. Now with the move tool, I still can't move it. However, if I have a layer on top of it, Command J, make it full screen again, we can move that one around with the move tool. If you want to move it sideways without going up or down, you just hold the shift key while you're moving and you can see the line says, this is where you're at. And you can see I'm moving my cursor up and down, trying to move it up and down. You can't do that. If I let go, hold the shift key, I can go straight up. So basically the shift key while you're moving will constrain it either horizontal or vertical. So if you wanna make sure you go perfectly straight up or perfectly straight to the side, hold the shift key while you're moving it. So it'll always have a copy of the image below it or underneath it, I mean. No, I, I made an extra copy with the Command-J. Okay. Um, if I had a different image in there um, on top of the layer on top of it, then it would be the one I'm moving. Um, with the Move I, tool. Sorry. My, is there much of a difference between the Move tool and the Hand tool? Yes. The Move tool, if I do the Hand tool right now, H for Hand, let's make it bigger that moves the entire document. The move tool, hit V for move, it moves just the layer that you're selected on. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, in upper, the upper left-hand corner of the toolbar, it says auto-select layer or group. 
Mm. Okay. I don't use auto select. If I have, let's make this puppy a whole lot smaller. And I'll put a big white stroke around it so you can see where we're at. And stroke, stroke, stroke. Oh, we'll make a red stroke on it. Cool. Okay. This is the layer that I want to play with right now. If I auto select and I accidentally, I'm looking to hit the bottom layer and I try to hit the bottom layer, I hit the one in between, or if you have multiple layers are really close and you can't tell where they're at, it's going to select the wrong layer. You can see if I'm clicking on the background layer, it won't select it because it is the background layer. I'd have to undo that. Now it will select whichever layer I want it to select. Um, if I want to turn off my auto select and I want to select say layer one, which is the one in the stroke, just hold the op the command or control key and click on that layer. And that will select it for you for the move tool. So you don't have to have the auto select on, or if you turn the auto select off, you just click on whichever layer you want to go after on the uh, layer panel. Okay. Magic wand tool is W. You have the magic wand, you have the quick selection tool, and you have the object selection tool. Um, I am in love with the object selection tool. That's one of the newer things that's just like wicked cool in the last year that they've come out with. If I click on object selection tool, I use it as a lasso most of the time. So I'll lasso the sun and it's on the wrong layer to pull that off. So we'll do it on the right layer. Lasso the sun and it just selected the sun for me. Wow. That is wicked cool, saves a whole lot of time. I don't need the pin tool anymore. Hey, Mike, does yes, that have a pixel dimension going inward or outward with that object selection? As far as like a feather or something? Yeah, kind of like a feather. No, but you can feather it once you've got it selected. You can expand on it in the selection tool. Yeah, you can go up to select, modify. Modify. And then feather, either feather expand, contract. Um, or smooth. Yeah, whatever you want to do with it. Okay. I haven't used the object tool yet. You you want to try it. Trust me, you want to try it. I, I love it. I see that it's great. Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, they've gone through iterations starting with the magic wand tool. Yeah. I mean, it used to be called the tragic wand tool. <laughs> um, now with the um, object selection. Quick selection was cool. Object selection is like, oh my god! It's even so, it, so it picks out the hairs when you when you're doing that for the like hair hair uh, for it girls' hair and everything. It won't take out the hairs here in the object selection tool because you can see. Okay, I want to do the sun, but it left well, it left a little bit on the side over here too. Yeah. So what I will do is hold the Option or Alt key and select that area right there, and it gets me pretty dang close but it's still left this area here that's when you would go into select and mask and if you have hair the upper left on the toolbar says refine hair hair click on that and it should refine the hair for you pretty good oh okay to make a full screen command zero to deselect or Get rid of the selection, Command D to deselect. OK, we talked about it a little bit earlier, changing the foreground and background colors. X, X goes back and forth. That way, you don't have to go find this itty bitty little arrow thing right here to figure out what you're doing. X does it for you, it saves you a lot of time when you're trying to find that little arrow right there, right underneath the banana. We'll get into the banana, banana in just a second. Um, y is for history brush, which I cannot do right now because I got rid of my layer, my background layer. So 
Um, the history brush we've talked a little bit about, but the why is history um, really cool. I use it for retouching the whites of the eyes. I'll go into go for B for brush. No, it won't do it. Okay. Um, bring it into lighten at 7% and just lighten it down. It works really cool. And last but not least is Z. Everybody knows what Z is. It's a zoom tool. Zoom, zoom. When you get really big, you get these grids across there. You can hit Command H to hide them. But it doesn't want to hide them because zoom is playing. And if I hit Command H, it makes zoom go away. So you go to view. Click on the word extras to unclick it, and it's gone. Hmm. Okay, that is a quick down and dirty. Um, let's go to edit keyboard shortcuts. You can change any of these keyboard shortcuts that you want. If you want to change preferences to command P instead of print, you just double click click or click on the keyboard shortcut there and say command P. And it will say it's already being used for another one. Do you want to use it? No, I don't. So I'll hit cancel. Um, if you want to see what all of your keyboard shortcuts are, on the bottom right, it says summarize. So I'll click on summarize. And what it does, it makes a basically a website for you. I've already got it there. Cancel. And then I'll go to that particular one. There it is. Double click on it. And it brings up all of my keyboard shortcuts. Hmm. Option, Mike? Command, Z, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Does that also work for, I've programmed function keys so that when I open up an image and I'm retouching, I can add layers, add curved layers, uh, flatten it and rotate it uh, just from function. Will that also show up in that that's, summary? I don't believe so because I think that's your actions. Yeah, that falls under actions. It falls under actions, so. Um, okay. That won't work. Okay. Um, so that's where you, Keyboard shortcuts is all there. If you want to change, um, like Command U is desaturation, desatur you can change it so that your keyboard shortcuts actually come over to your layers over here. So when you hit like curves, image adjustment, curves, Instead of going straight into curves, you go into your non-destructive mode and curves adjustment layer. You can set your keyboard shortcuts to do that. I've done that like five or six times and I undo it before every class and I forget to redo it. And I have to go in and re reset my shortcuts as well. Um, also in here, we have menus and we have toolbar. Let's go into toolbar real quick. And you can see, this is where you customize your toolbar. I don't use a polygonal lasso tool or polygonal lasso tool, so I'll drag it over to the right, and now it's gone. It's not permanently gone, because I, well, I decide I want to use it again. So I'll bring it back over to lasso tool, and I can put it back in there again. So you can free up your um, stuff on the left-hand side in your um, toolbar and make it easy. Is that, if, is that under edit again, you said? That is edit, edit. down to toolbar, very, very bottom. OK. And if you hold the shift and option key and click on done, magic happens to your computer. It will change it into the banana. banana. That's how you add the banana. Oh. So if I click on the banana, it brings up the edit toolbar. 
and I can do that. Now shift or option? Shift and option or shift and alt. So if I bring up toolbar, okay, I'm done, click okay. And now you can see my banana's gone. So it just has the three dots at the bottom. Edit toolbar, shift option or shift alt done. When I go out, it now has a banana in there. That's one of the um, Easter eggs in Photoshop that not everybody knows about. That's that there was worth the price of a mission. <laughs> that way people say, hey, how'd you get a banana on there? Yeah. I can't I can't tell you. Mine uh, has Dennis's picture come out instead of a banana. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing, right? <laughs> yes. Ooh. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Come your um, love for everyone, Dennis. <laughs> if one another keyboard shortcut, Command J to make this a, another copy again, and we'll make it Command T. I don't want a path. How did I get a path? I don't know. You're the expert. Okay, let's do this. We'll go back to the beginning. Crop. Okay. Command J to copy it. So we have two layers. I'm going to Command T to transform it. Free transform is Command or Control T. If you hold the Option key while you're doing this, it goes towards the little dot right here in the middle. So in this particular case, the dot's right in the middle. So when I drag the corners, it goes towards the dot. If I move this dot to the upper right-hand corner, and then I hold the shift or the option key, it will drag it towards that dot. And you can also use that dot to spin things around. So if I put it in the middle again and spin, it spins on the dot in the middle. If I move it to say the top one and it'll rotate around that. So you can unclick it in the upper left-hand corner if you don't want it in the top of the toolbar up here. You can also tell it where you want it to be by clicking on any of the dots up there as well. I forgot where I was going with this. <laughs> oh, I remember. Let me go ahead and put a stroke on so you can see it. There we go. Perfect stroke. You can see where we're going. Um, I was going to use the up and down, left and right arrows. Let me get out of the crop tool real quick. There we go. Move. I'm in the move tool right now, V for move. And if I want to move it right and left, I just hit the up and down, left and right keys to nudge it. If you want it to go faster, hold the shift key. And you can see it goes a whole lot faster. And if you want to go really, really, really slow, hold the command or control key and it goes really, really, really slow. So if you only got a little bit to do, hold the command or control key. If you want to go all the way over to the sun, nudging it, hold the shift key. Hmm. And if you hold the option key, it makes a copy of it. Made a whole lot of copies of it, as a matter of fact. Any questions? That's pretty awesome. Those are keyboard shortcuts in uh, in about an hour. So there's a it whole lot. Of, there's a whole lot of stuff there. Uh, feel free to watch this over and over and over. Um, make sure you subscribe on YouTube because um, that way it helps a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. Michael, hey. uh, Michael, on the summarize the uh, uh, did you did you go to preference to summarize all the the tools? Okay, let me share tool? again. Okay, I went to edit. Okay. Keyboard shortcuts. 
than to summarize. Oh, okay. Thank I you. Think, I think there's a shortcut. I want to say command, shift command K or so. I can't remember the shortcut for that one to get into the keyboard shortcuts, but um, just go into there, go into summarize, and then save it to your desktop or wherever, and you can bring it up in a uh, like a website. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. Hey, Mike, or... uh, Mike, this is Dwight. Uh, you, you mentioned, oh, can you say what the specs you're running, like a uh, operating system and which version of Photoshop you're running right now? Okay, I can do that. Share screen desktop. Okay, Photoshop is 2021. I believe let's go to about Photoshop and I'm in 22.5.1. Mm -hmm. I'm the latest, latest update they've had so far. Mm -hmm. And my neural filters are not working. I'm very upset with that. And my video creating video does not work as well. Mm -hmm. And when you see this come up on the beginning screen, when you open it, you can go to the artwork, click on, Ted Chin, and you can see um, information about him and some of the stuff he does. Mm -hmm. the The last version had a girl, and her work was just totally awesome. And then I go about this Mac. I am running Big Sur three point seven quad core processor with thirty two gigs of memory, which lately doesn't seem like it's enough. Okay, thank you. You betcha. Yeah. Any other questions? So what's the difference between save and save as? Save will save over the top of what you got. Save as, as okay. you can change the name, you can um, change the type of uh, save you do, whether it's JPEG, TIFF, PSD, PSB, whatever the case is. Easy Thank questions. You. Thank you. Keep it easy. I'm just trying to help you. I got your list here. What you told me to say. <laughs> so no. So uh, okay. I'll, I'll send you the. I'll send you the money in a little bit. <laughs> okay. Venmo at. <laughs> I have a question for you, Mike. When we do, when I do a cropping and I crop it the way I want it, like a, for example, eight by ten, and I go ahead and uh, I'm getting ready to hit enter to go ahead and you know set it. I, on the top part of the. Of the screen has a little check mark and I've heard that if, to use the check mark instead of just sending enter if you enter you to you disrupt the data on it where the check mark saves it is there a difference between the two okay let's go to crop eight by ten okay um there's a couple different things you can do with an eight by ten crop one is you can delete crop pixels or not delete crop pixels. If you don't delete the crop pixels, it'll keep them all there for you. Um, if you delete them, they're gone, but it saves a whole lot of memory space. I always have delete crop pickles, pixels, pickles. The other then, sweet. Yeah. Um, also, when you're- There's in, a check mark. There's your check mark. However, the one thing I wanted to show you, a keyboard shortcut. You can go up here and type in 10 by 8 or 8 by 10, whichever you know you want it to be. Right. You, you can hit the arrows back and forth. Right. Or when you have all your grids up like this, you can hit the X key and X will exchange the the format of the crop. Oh. If you hit okay. if you hit enter, um, it will render the crop. If you hit the checkbox, it will render the crop. They both do the same exact thing. Wow. Okay. And we'll stop share. Uh, one more keyboard shortcut while we're going. Let me go ahead and come back into Photoshop. Command O to open. Let's do a bird. 
and I want to go between this one and the last one. I can either click on each of the tabs up here or on my Mac. I don't know what the keyboard shortcut is on a PC, but on a Mac, I hit control, not command, but control tab. And it will take me between the two. Same thing. Yeah, it's control tab on Windows. Control tab on Windows. Okay, thank you. That's cool. Keyboard shortcuts for everything. Save saves you a lot of time, a lot of effort of trying to find a way with the mouse or your pen, whichever one you're working with. Um, that way, at the end of the day, you can close your doors at five forty-five instead or four forty-five instead of five o'clock. Save yourself fifteen minutes a day. Get that margarita blender going. <laughs> I, I thought you didn't drink, Michael. Well, I'm get, I'm trying to get ready for West Coast school, so <laughs> I got to get in shape. I might have a beer tonight. I don't know. I had one a couple weeks ago. Tastes good. Every once in a while, you got to have one because they do taste good. Okay. Any other questions? Once again, Michael, awesome tips. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great, great class. Thanks great a lot, class. Mike. Thank, thank you. you.